So today we're going to look at Mark chapter 9, 33 to 37. I want to start by putting it into some context in Mark's Gospel by creating something of a narrative timeline. We start with the Transfiguration in Mark chapter 9, 2 to 14, followed by the healing of the boy by prayer. We have Jesus foretelling of his death and resurrection in Mark 9, 30 to 32, followed by a conversation and argument between the disciples, who is the greatest, and Jesus teaching them with using a small child as an example. We then have another exorcist, and we follow with some hard teachings from Mark 9, 42 to 50. Now, in the content of the story, we go from an argument to the teaching. The argument, who is the greatest? The teaching, anyone who wants to be first must be the last and servant of all. Now behind the argument, I suspect there is some fear, fear about what is happening, what is coming, as well as some confusion, because this thing that is coming just seems to be so odd. Why are we re reacting to the teaching about Jesus' death in the way that we are? Is, I suspect, one of the thoughts going through the disciples' minds. And finally, we have a profound misunderstanding about the nature of God. And the disciples are entering into language about who is the greatest in God's kingdom, not understanding that in God's kingdom there is no the greatest. Jesus' teaching... Is, seems to be disconnected to a certain extent, and that's not unusual for Jesus. But I think if we know, look more closely, we see one, that it's addressed to the disciples. That means it's not necessarily a broad, general teaching, but it is of significance for those of us who wish to follow Jesus. The next is that it is profoundly humbling. In this day and age, we have a greater care and consideration for young people, for children, witness, if you will, people's reactions to images of children hurt or dying. And thirdly, it is profoundly opening. The disciples are instructed to welcome people who many would not have considered to be appropriate for the kingdom of God, in this case, a child. So what might be the implications then? I think out of the argument, we in the church need to redefine greatness so that it's not about public acclaim, scoring points, followers on Facebook, but rather that it's about who has created the capacity for transformation and relationship with God. That is a great thing to do. And then out of the teaching of Jesus, I believe that we need to open our eyes to the presence of God, even in those that we might not normally expect, as the disciples would never have imagined that they would be welcoming children in the name of Jesus, and in doing that, they'd be welcoming the one who sent him.